Okay, got another uh, set of amps here from uh, Kicker. These are the uh, Kicker ZR series. Um, the I believe that the original, which is going to have the uh, brushed uh, fins on the uh, heat sink casting, uh, I believe those came out in 96. The uh, all black, which is the same casting, they're just not, they're just not brushed on the fins. Um, those would be, I believe those ran through 2001 or so, somewhere around there, 2002. Um, not all of those were made in the United States. All these were made in the U.S. Um, I'm not exactly sure when they switched over, um, but, uh, you know, I have a couple, a few examples here of the, uh, of the ZR series. Um, this one here is a Kicker ZR1000. And it has the end caps on it, although these end caps, I grabbed from those because this, they, these didn't come with any end caps. You had to purchase them separately. They had um, some that were painted black and then some that were brushed aluminum. I had a set of brushed aluminums, but uh, I wrapped them in a, in a rag to uh, protect them from getting scratched up when I was uh, storing the, the amp and... Uh, the, the rag got damp and it completely pitted and destroyed those end caps. So there's, you can find them every now and again, but they're kind of hard to find. These are, these are common because these actually came with every ZR amp. It's kind of like a hammered finish. Um, those came with the black, one, the black amps, which I believe were released in the uh, 2000 uh, model year. Um, so these ran for about four, three, four years. Maybe it was 97 when these came out, but... Um, so we'll take a look at a few a few things on these amps. Um, one feature that I want to start with was the most unique to this series and to Kicker. I don't know anybody else who was really doing it at the time. I know um, the Crunch had an amp that you could plug in different modules to it and do do different things. Um, but this this was pretty unique. It's kind of that that type of thing, but it's a uh, um, it's different crossovers. Um, I know Ryan had the pop top series. They had crossovers underneath that pop top, but, um, these were like a really easy to swap chip and you could buy all sorts of different chips. This one's like one of the more common ones you'll find is the, uh, SWX and then, um, the ZRX, which is the, uh, the two subwoofer crossover and they just plug into the side. Um, and even, even if you're not running a crossover and you're running full range, you have to have a, uh, it's just called the MDP because that's, that's what these are called, the module docking ports. And I think that there's one in this amp. Yeah, this is just, it's just a blank. So it just, it's basically, basically like the bypass card in a uh, Orion. And then, um, as you saw, I had these two amps linked together, so they did have a, uh, plug this back in, there we go, um, the amp link, and they also, they also had the ones that were, um, the, the brushed, and, uh, to link the, that style together, but I, I only have one of these, um, and then two, this is, a. Uh, that's a ZR600. Those, those were a beast of an amp. Um, it's got three 30 amp fuses. Um, the, the, the one thing about the ZR series that was... Uh, I mean, they had a cheater version of this, the XS series. And they had, like, basically um, a version of the uh, ZR600 and a version of the ZR1000 in a cheater amp and they were known as the XS50 for the 600 and the XS100 for the ZR1000. The um and then basically those were just like a high high current where you had to you had to drop the ohms down. Um these do their peak power supposedly at 2.88 which is 38 ohm subs wired in parallel. Um they actually um do 
they 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 do they they'll do fine down to two ohm and they'll actually put out more power there but they do get very hot um this thing will turn into a barbecue grill um gets very very hot but that's not uncommon with ab amps um like the precision power power class those amps get very hot um they, these do have a uh a thermal overload and so It'll trip, and then when it cools down, it'll turn back on. I had a ZR1000 back in the late 90s. I overheated that thing numerous times in the summer. It always came back on. Um, here's another chip. See, this is a ZRX. Um, for whatever reason, I seem to prefer this over the SWX. It's, I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, whether it has a steeper roll-off or what it is. Um, it just, to me, this seems like a superior crossover. It was the earlier model, but... I don't know. I don't know what's different about them. Um, th these amps are extremely underrated. So you have like those cheater amps, like the XS50, the XS100. But these were kind of like a cheater, more like a Rockford... Fosgate did their cheaters, which is to just way underrate them. Like the uh, ZR240, which I have no idea why it's that's its designation because I think even its literature, I think it's still rated to do 280 instead of 240. So I don't really know how it got that designation. That will do well north of 500 watts, no problem. And uh, like the ZR1000. You know, you get 13, 1400 watts out of a ZR1000, and if you really drop it down and you're just doing like burps with it or whatever, you can get you can get 1800 watts out of a ZR1000 if you get it, you feed it enough power. Um, unfortunately, these only have four gauge power input, but at the time that was kind of that was kind of common. You wouldn't see odd gauge inputs on an amp. Um, you might see dual um, hookups for power, but you wouldn't see anything larger than four gauge generally. Um, you know, these, these were, these were pretty reliable amps. Um, they're super inefficient. They're, they're notoriously power hungry. Um, you better have really good electrical. Um, I had, you know, uh, two extra batteries, an alternator and a ZR1000 and a small Eclipse 4 channel. And that ZR1000 ate up all that power, no problem. And I was still, still getting like the headlight dimming and whatever. Um, whereas now I'm running an amp that's pretty much as powerful but um just way more efficient in the uh ppi 2350 i don't have any of those issues um yeah throughout the whole line though they're really good this is a zr360 and it is not working which seems to be common with the uh the zr360s i think that just that that model in the line seems to be a weak model um not for power but just um, for, um, longevity, you'll see a lot of them for parts not working on eBay. Um, you know, these amps are pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just got, you know, your power inputs, your fusing. The ZR1000 doesn't have any fusing on, on board. It'll all be, you know, you have to have an external fuse, um, power, protect, speaker hookups, gain, RCAs, and then your docking port. Um, I do have a couple of accessories with this. This is what these, those uh, docking ports came in. You buy these at uh, you know your audio store um, for whatever your needs were. They had you know for mid range. Um, you know you could get a tweeter. I don't. Um, you could get uh, and then this, which is um, to me superior than the knob that you can get with the precision power because the precision power is a base boost knob this is a remote gain and so what you would do is you plug that in to the side of the amp into that docking port and then you run like a telephone cord up front and then you got your knob and this is for the ZR I actually have one it works with the ZR series because the docking ports were uh, a holdover from their um, S SS series. 
And I have one here new in box. Um, the, the, this was known for the, for the SS, but like I said, this will work in a ZR. It's a active remote game module. And it's the same thing as uh, what you would get with the ZR series. It's just just a little bit different on the, uh, the plastic, but everything else remains the same. Then you just hook it up there and then run the cord all the way up to the front of the vehicle. Now the uh, kicker ZR series is probably it's 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 up there in my opinion is amplifier from that era from the the late nineties. Um, I think that they they're very comparable to the A2 series of um Rockford Fosgate and they they seem to have like almost exactly like a comparable amp like the A200 would compare pretty closely to um I know that that what would it be like uh, yeah the A the 800 A2 would compare to a ZR600 the 1100A2 would be pretty close to the ZR1000, um, and, and so on and so forth. They had something all down the line pretty much comparable to it. Um, I don't know. I haven't run a lot of those. The, the A2 series from uh, Fosgate, um, they've, I've heard a lot of them. They, they, they're a really good sounding amp, really strong amp. Um, Fairly common, so you can get a really good deal on them nowadays. Um, same thing with ZR. You can, you can get a pretty good deal on a ZR um, versus a lot of other a lot of other things. I mean, I think some of it's going up in price, but it it really fluctuates up and down with the with the old school audio. But uh, you can usually find a pretty good deal on some of the more common items. You'll find you won't see a lot of ZR one thousands out there. I'd expect those to be around three hundred bucks. Um, sometimes you get a little cheaper, like two fifty. Sometimes more, three fifty. This was a mint example, and it was it cost. I think I, I paid right around three hundred for it. Um, the in comparison to the PPI, just it couldn't be more different. Those are super efficient. It's kind of I can I, I kind of compare them to like the the PPI is like a Ferrari, and this is like a Cummins diesel. Like they're <laughs> they're just a blunt instrument, but they they sound really good. They get the job done. Um, very powerful, a lot of power, and pretty much unlimited as, as much. It's just a matter of you feeding it enough power to make that power. Um, these things, it seems like the sky's the limit sometimes on them. Um, they're just very, very, very powerful amplifiers for, you know, when you consider it for the time. Um, for AB, this is kind of kind of the pinnacle of AB, anything right before 2000, because then everything started to switch over to Class D um, topology. They had some um, uh, Class D amps in these... ZR, um, they I think they were called the DX series, and they were in these these uh, black um, cast uh, aluminum uh, heat sinks, and those are notoriously bad for having failures. So I would not recommend getting. Any, I think there was two models, two different um, wattage wattage sizes of those, and it, both of them were bad. Um, and two, I was on some of the ones that are that were made. They were made in Korea that are all black. Whenever they switched over, so I try, I generally stay away from, um, you know the the ZR series that are that are all black. Plus, I just I don't think I don't like the aesthetic. I think that this. I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like a grill, but when you see it in person, it's pretty. Especially when you one as large as the ZR one thousand, it's a pretty sharp amplifier. Um, they're just they're real quality items. Um. I I have I haven't had one personally quit on me. I mean, you will see them not working, but generally it's somebody somebody stupid did something stupid to the amplifier, is my opinion. Um, you know, any not every you know any amp's vulnerable to stupidity, so you know you just got to make sure you're getting it from somebody who 
took care of it, knew what they were doing, and you should be all right. Um, I, I haven't heard any problems with caps or anything, but these are getting to the age where you're going to have to start thinking about recapping them. Same thing with the, the PC class art series. Um, Orions from uh, like the SX, the uh, early HCCAs. Those type of things need to, you know, you need to get them into a attack and get them recapped. Um, I know that Phoenix Gold MS series are notorious for having caps go and they'll take out other things on the board. So you need to get those replaced before you even think about firing those up. So, um, you know, you just have to, sound streams too. I know there was a, a, a run of sound streams that needed to have the caps replaced. They just had a, a bad batch of caps. So, um, you know, those are quality amps, but you know, they were called smoke screen for a while because they, <laughs> or smoke stream, because they, they, they were tending to let go quite frequently. But uh, that's about all I have to say on the ZR series.